All right, hello my friends, I'm back, and welcome back for more Wild Frost. We've done part one and part two of this game already, and moving on to act three now. Let's take a quick look at the deck, see what we've got. If you haven't seen parts one and two, they're of course earlier in this playlist, and you should probably check them out. But we're going to keep going with act three and see how far we get in our very first look at this game. The deck currently is looking, I'd say, pretty good. There's a couple tweaks I want to make. We have our four companions, and we've buffed Foxy up significantly with these charms so that he attacks for three damage three times with poison and freeze every single time. have also added a charm to this Hongo's Hammer for additional poison, so it strikes twice and then is consumed, pulling it out of the deck, but adding six poison right away is pretty powerful. The Spice Sparklers are really good, just giving us some extra damage. A couple complaints I have about this deck currently are that Spice Sparklers and this Shelbo are sort of anti-synergy, because when this is in play, this deals 4 damage to your own units in exchange for 5 shields, which obviously is not a great deal. You can use it to finish off weakened enemies, though. Alternatively, uh, and one other issue that we have is that currently the only way we have to heal is Big Berry, we did remove the starting health potion from the deck, but I'm going to be looking for a slightly more efficient way to add in a little bit of healing, I think, just to make sure that we're not in danger of losing units during most fights. All right, let's get things underway. Oh, also here are my relics. We have the plus one card draw and the more frequent redraws. I'm actually not 100% certain what this pathing means. It looks like this one goes off of the kind of beaten path. We could skip this charm and go straight to the battle, or go up to the Bling Snail Cave. I think we do want the charm, although this, the way that this is telegraphing maybe sort of a secret side path is a little weird, but that might also just be kind of a graphical glitch with how the pathing worked out. So let's go to this uh, charm. Definitely think that charms are extremely valuable. Upgrading your cards just increases the overall efficiency of your deck very heavily. Alright, gain draw two on kill. Draw cards to my hand. Well, there's definitely a few options here. We could, of course, continue to buff up Foxy. We could put that on our uh, leader, who's very likely to get kills. We could put that on Big Barry, who were highly incentivized to try to get final blows on, or I could put that on like the Scrappy Sword or something to help cycle through the deck. I think in this case I'm going to hand this to the Sword, because, oh, actually, it looks like Foxy has reached the maximum number of charms, so three seems to be the limit. I think I'm actually going to put this on the Sword, because we can use that to last hit, and adding a little deck velocity to our worst card seems pretty valuable to me. This also will often be hitting for four because of the Spice Sparklers. Alright, let's go see if we can get this battle going. So these all have Wild, which means they gain Frenzy when other Wild cards are killed. They've got the Warthog, who counterattacks after taking a hit, so that's extremely dangerous for Foxy. Does... Okay, so Snow does freeze counters, so I believe if we have Foxy hit the Warthog, we should be totally safe here. Let's just play out our three guys. So one option I have is to dig for my ability that will hit all undamaged units. I have this uh, Palm Bomb, which we very unluckily didn't draw this time, I think, unfortunate. It is unfortunate that we didn't get this, because that would clear the whole opponent's row. I think I'm pretty happy just taking three here at some point, so I might just set up this Spice Sparklers. We could also play the Hammer on the Warthog and start taking it down with Poison. But I think getting this out early gives us a lot more options for what we're doing. We'll, of course, have to move something to block the We'll move Big Barry here to stop the Spice Sparklers from dying. Now I could freeze the Warthog. I could try to just kill something. For example, I could kill something with this sword and draw two. 
but I think we are doing well enough. I don't mind taking a little bit of damage from these hogs, and until we can kill them all at once, I would rather not kill them and, and give them the frenzy. So let's start taking this down with the poison. That means that it will go off before... that the Warthog will die before it ever attacks, so that's pretty good for us. Here I'm going to, I think, move Foxy to clear this row, and we will take out the this hog with the Scrappy Sword, drawing us into our other units. Foxy will then clear this row. Now we have this Warthog, which also has Smack Back. This guy, while active, add one double attack to all allies. Okay, so we've got Big Barry who's going to kill something and clear and heal, so we can move our leader there. Let's do that. We'll swap them and Foxy. I do want to kill this Rock Hog. Another option we have is just to go with the Palm Bomb, which would clear just about everything. Although, since the opponents are... I guess arriving in five turns. Honestly, that seems pretty valuable, so I might forego the healing here and just clear the whole opponent's row. I suppose I could go for the healing, play Colonel, and then next round play the Pomp Bomb. Yeah, let's let's do that. We'll develop develop our board this turn. And then we can still Pomp Bomb before all the opponents attack, as well as get the heals. Healed everything back to maximum. Let's get this going. We will, in that case, take five. What I don't know is, does Frenzy cause... So something I'm not certain of is, does Frenzy cause this to smack back multiple times? In which case we would be in a lot of trouble. I think, given that that is a possibility, I'm going to freeze the Warthog and take three from this Hog. We'll tank that on Big Barry. Because I don't want to risk not understanding how the mechanic works and having this Warthog get a million Frenzy and then just smashing our, uh, our guy back for 20 or 25, however much that would be. So let's, let's go with a freeze first. Definitely a slight error here. I should have allowed my leader to hit Warthog rather than having it hit the Rock Hog here. Here I am going to move Foxy up here so it clears the Rock Hog and then hits the Warthog and then we're going to hit all undamaged enemies just to clear the back row. This is now frozen enough that it should be okay. I could also have tanked and probably should have on Colonel rather than on Big Berry to gain the value from the shells. So definitely some sequencing errors here. Redraw, I would redraw six and we have three in discard so that would redraw my entire deck. At this point I think that's pretty good. I do want this to start, or I guess I redraw seven. I do want this to start ticking down again. And then I'll spend this round enhancing Foxy with Flame War. No particular reason to change my ordering here. We're also setting up to have Big Barry get the Killing Blow on the Warthog. Here there's not really much that I want to play, so... I will probably burn a card like this Shellbow, so that would... So I guess if I burn Shellbow, that does cause a problem because it stops Big Barry from healing. If I burn Snowstick, then of course we don't have the Snowstick. I can burn Scrappy Sword. I don't know if that will redraw the Scrappy Sword and the Flame Water. I think it probably will, in which case I think I, I'm willing to accept not getting the two healing here. No cards that I have could avoid killing this Warthog, except for the Pom Bomb, and just burning that doesn't seem particularly good to me, since new enemies are arriving next round, and having the thing that will clear out a bunch of undamaged enemies is, is good. So, 
All right, so the ordering, the way that the ordering works there is, all right, we got the boss coming in. The way that the ordering works there is it draws and then goes to the discard pile. So that's good to know. I certainly want Foxy to hit Razor, but I think we will accept allowing them to be wild. We have a, a few options here. So if we clear all of these units, then Razor gets a ton of multiple of Frenzy. Warthog also gets a ton of Frenzy, although that's less important to what we're doing right now. But we do get to start stacking up Poison. We only get one freeze on Razor at a time. Seven damage to Warthog would mean that Foxy would kill it. And then I can start stalling until Foxy attacks again. So there's that option as well. Foxy would kill it, but not have any spillover damage. I think that's a fairly safe play, but I might still wait one turn on using this Palm Bomb to allow Foxy to start stacking up poison on the Razor. The Warthog I don't think is going to be a terribly relevant attacker this round because it doesn't tick for five turns and I fully expect the game to have ended there by then. So let's get Foxy buffed up again. That's Frozen Razor, and now I can Palm Bomb to clear all of these hogs. I do want to move Ousnow, though, so that we do not attack Warthog. These guys now have a ton of wild, obviously. Warthog's still not ticking for three turns, so I will take this opportunity to put one snow on Razor and prevent it from ticking down. In two turns, we have Razor attacking, but we're hitting it for 15 plus three poison, so that should end... that should kill it. I'm going to place this freeze on Warthog, and then... Oh, I, I should have swapped earlier, but that's okay. Just in case that didn't end the fight, I should have done extra damage. But I would say that was a very clean fight. Alright, we have an option between card removal, although currently we don't actually want to remove anything except for this shell bow from our deck. So the card removal is a little bit... Uh, loses a little bit of value there. I'm going to, I think, go up to this Wooly Snail, because I think we can do with another chop, maybe add in one more useful card to our deck. This is pretty nice as a, an option for a little bit of healing. Apply to Frost Barrage temporarily reduces attack. Add Frenzy, increase countdown by one, can only be used once per battle. I don't think the Blaze T is particularly valuable for our deck. Doubling the attack of something is quite nice, but Foxy on having Foxy on such a low cooldown, I think, is one of the key strategies that we have. I could purchase a crown and make sure that we start with Colonel on the field as well, or I could put a crown on something else and just get that started. I think the crown is pretty nice. Get that on Colonel. Okay, oh, here we go. And then I believe I will buy this Berry Blade. I think that adds a little bit of valuable healing to our deck, and we might want to put a charm on it. I'll grab a charm as well. All right, the Acorn Charm. Just gain eight block. All right. Well, that I think is perfect for Colonel here. Yes, so only, only our uh, companions can take this one, but since this guy wants to be tanking hits anyways, just starting with 8 shell is pretty nice, just giving him quite a bit of extra health. And that's all we can afford.
Here we can go grab another charm. I really like the charm system, and I think they're extremely powerful, so I've, I've been going out of my way to get them. They really change how a lot of these abilities play. All right, so we add one kind of scrap as well. Can I equip that to... Okay, so only to the Spice Sparklers. I might save that even. Just having it block two damage instead of one doesn't seem extremely valuable. But I don't know that we're going to add another scrap unit to our deck, so I, I will play this anyways. We can maybe use it to tank a hit. If it doesn't come up, then it doesn't come up. And let's see what... Oh, we get a journal page, and then we get... The Eye of the Storm. All right, so the Emperor Shade. As we approach the Eye of the Storm, snarls and roars echoing through the icy winds, we encountered this otherworldly shade. Haunted creatures crowded around it as if they were under its thrall. This shade, it can possess not only inanimate objects, but actual living beings. Fighting it is hopeless. I must go back and warn the others. Do not approach it by any means. Well, I think we're approaching it. <laughs> Especially given that it's literally the only thing we can click on on the field. Alright, we've got the Frost Guardian, so let's take a second and, and read what we have. So, smack back for five on the spike wall here, that's pretty powerful. Rock Hog adds Frenzy to everything. Ice Forge adds plus two to all allies, minus two to all enemies. Yikes. Okay, so we definitely need to clear out that Ice Forge very quickly. One health loss at equal attack to self and allies. Alright, the Frost Guardian is definitely worrisome. I'm also assuming that this is a two-stage boss, because so far the uh, fancy frame card frame bosses have been two-stage. Let's play out our units, and then we'll make a game plan. Alright, so over here we've got... This guy can lose health. One option that I have is simply to play the Spice Sparklers and then the Shellbow, and that will blow up Rock Hog, that will deal one damage to the Ice Forge, that will deal one damage to the Spike Wall. It will increase the attack of everything, but these at least don't attack. They have no, no counters, they just strike back. Or this one just strikes back, this one will never attack, it's, it's just a buffing unit. I could also, of course, get my poison going, but I don't think I want to increase this guy's attack yet. So let's get the Spice Sparklers developed. Having the plus two damage means that we one-shot the Rock Hog, which I think is very nice. I'm gonna start cycling through that. I do, of course, want to start developing Snow Sticks on the Frost Guardian to stop it from attacking as soon as possible. But actually, maybe it's better to do that because I can still have this hit everything else. We do lose 7 damage on the Frost Guardian, though. Yeah, I think we want to save the Snow Stick until next turn and just clear the Rock Hog. In part, that's just because it's a little easier for me to think about as well. So this will hit this, and he'll gain a freeze, which means that I don't need to... A, a single freeze, because it obviously has resist snow like all the bosses. But that is good because it means that I don't have to play a snow stick this turn. So I can develop some damaging effects. I could clear this Ice Forge to get a third poison on the Frost Guardian. I could also just hit it with poison uh, using my Scrappy Sword. That would draw me into Palm Bomb, or that would draw me into Snow Stick and Flame Water, which are both pretty nice to have in play. It would also mean that Foxy hits for a little bit of extra damage. Currently, it's dealing one and then six to the Frost Guardian. One to the Ice Forge and then six to the Frost Guardian. Cycling through with Scrappy Sword seems pretty valuable as well. It prevents me from having to use a redraw as quickly. This guy's frozen for one round currently. So next round, I will definitely need to Snow Stick it. 
But this round we are going to increase its poison. These two both hitting, but that's only just some DPS. We definitely do not ever want this spike wall to attack. So I will probably need to do some shuffling around and then maybe hit it with something else. One of the uh, hand effects. Double hitting there seems really good. It just gets this guy up to 8 poison, so he's now starting to die pretty quickly. Let's do this shuffle so that I don't lose a unit to the spike wall, and then freeze this guy so he never attacks. Going to have to freeze this guy again, because otherwise he's going to attack something for 56. I could also just tank that damage on the Spice Sparkler. It's only attacking once, and we have we do have this option to block an attack of any size on the Sparkler, so that would let me develop something else. Maybe just hit the Spike Wall. I could also buff Foxy, for example. Grizzle has Resist Snow, which is pretty interesting as well. Plum, I don't think we care about that much. It's only two damage. Although I, I suppose it will be being buffed by the Frost Guardian. I think what I want to do in this case is hit the spike wall once so that I can start hitting things behind it. And then tank this damage on the spike sparkler rather than waste my freeze effect on something that is just going to bounce off this single scrap, right? So this takes any damage. And then I will use this card. I think it's my least valuable effect currently. I could also use the Shell Bow. It would basically increase Plum's health by one, but this card is even less valuable than the Berry Blade right now. Let's do that because then we're at least getting some value out of this Shell Bow. And I don't think increasing Plum's health by one is, is particularly relevant for this encounter. Another option is I could Flame Water Foxy, and then I get a second hit in on Grizzle. It means I'm not doing anything to the Spike Wall this round, but it does mean that I'm hitting Grizzle for an additional poison as well as four additional damage and getting this set up early. Let's actually do that. So we'll lose one health on that. Foxy will clear this guy. He'll turn into something else. Alright, so we didn't hit Grizzle because this turned into something else in the front rank, which I wasn't actually expecting. Here we've got a Grink. Two damage and restore four. That's totally fine. I think in this case... Um, we want to stop Grizzle from going off if we can, but unfortunately, Grizzle did appear behind the Frost Guardian. I could reshuffle to draw into the Palm Bomb. That would have the Frost Guardian's health only a single time, and also, I don't know if the Spike Wall counts as undamaged. That's an interesting question. And we are guaranteed to draw our whole deck when we redraw, so let's do that. Then I'm going to use the Palm Bomb to start clearing stuff. Also because it's maximum value. Okay, so that does count as undamaged. That's good to know. That means that when we, whenever we cycle through with Palm Bomb, we can kill the Spike Wall. That guy's down to 500 health now. Here I'd like to clear the spike wall so that Colonel and Big Berry between them kill Plum. But this will temporarily reduce attack, so we won't be doing 8 damage to Plum. That might be okay anyways, we can just get Plum low. I could also do something to kill Grink here. I don't know if killing this will still allow it to smack back. I believe it won't, so I could have Big Berry kill it, uh, although we have currently nothing that we need to heal. I could also use this Shell Bow, which would, I believe, clear out these two. Add a little shielding to Plum, putting Plum up to 9 health, so Plum still wouldn't die, but then Rink would be dead at least.
restoring four health to all allies I don't think is is a particular problem for what we have going on right now. Let's use this, because again, it's just so hard to get value out of this shell bow. And it reduces the Frost Guardian's health by so much. Alright, Frost Guardian is now going to attack, which I'd prefer not to have happen. Let's do a little bit of shuffling around, just in case there we end up wanting to let it attack anyways. I could snow stick it, but then we are losing a freeze effectively on Foxy. No, wait, because that would tick down on its turn and then Foxy would refreeze it. So I think that's probably the best play. And let's actually move Foxy up here, where he'll clear Plum, and then hit the Frost Guardian twice. I don't know if you can hear this uh, saw happening outside my window, but I'm going to record that. <laughs> All right, we're back. One of the neighbors, I think, cutting a tree. All right, so Foxy hit Plum. I'm uh, let me look, check the combat log because I was busy dealing with my window. So Foxy hits Plum and then Frost Guardian, but didn't apply freezing because the Frost Guardian was already frozen. That's okay. So I could either allow the Frost Guardian to hit Colonel for 10, but then Grizzle would kill Colonel, which I definitely don't want, or I could freeze Frost Guardian again. I could also freeze Grizzle. Grizzle also has freeze resistance. Given that they both have freeze resistance, I don't think we care at all if Colonel... Uh, is frozen for three. Let's tank up more shell onto Big Berry. That way Big Berry can maybe tank a hit from the Frost Guardian more easily. Then I'll freeze the Frost Guardian to prevent 10 damage. More enemies coming in this round. Hopefully stuff that we can clear with the Pom Bomb, but it looks like we can't. Probably just going to do a redraw and continue to just freeze Frost Guardian every round. Alright, this is triggers when an ally attacks, loses one, and then attacks for five. Well, that's fine, because we're not going to allow an ally to attack this round. Redrawing everything, and then we're going to play freeze on the Frost Guardian. Continue to just lock that down every round. Stun as a core mechanic in a game like this is very interesting to me. Most games steer clear of, apping, of adding in a bunch of stunning effects. Alright, so this guy's hitting for 10, and then this will hit for 5. So we could tank on Big Barry. Putting Big Barry down to 1. We could also just freeze. We would then be double freezing, but of course we're hitting it for... 12 and 3 poison, plus an additional 5. So it's still not... the boss is still not going to die before it would attack again. So I think in this case our best bet is actually going to be to tank one hit on Big Berry, and then we're going to use this Flame Water on Foxy to try to DPS it down a little faster. Big Berry drops to 1. Feeling good that I did the math correctly there, because I wasn't 100% certain. <laughs> Here I could Pom Bomb, that would deal 7 to this, and to this as well. Wouldn't do anything to affect the Frost Guardian, though. I could also just Berry Blade, hit it for 5. I think we just want to try to DPS down the boss, so let's, let's just hit it for 5. We'll heal Big Berry for 5 as well. Bigfoot has Barrage, so it's going to hit everything in the row, so I definitely do not want the Spice Sparklers to be in that row. This will also be attacking for 5, which is fine. I could also just freeze the Bigfoot, but I think what we want to do is freeze the Frost Guardian. Currently, Bigfoot is attacking everything in this row for 5. And the Mega Mimic will hit Big Berry for 5. 
if I freeze Frost Guardian, then next turn it won't attack. Grizzle will attack, but we will have enough health to tank that on something, I believe. Maybe not. Do have to check if there's something we can tank on. Another option that we always have is to return Big Barry to the deck and then redraw him, replay him immediately. Definitely a play I should be keeping in mind. What I want to do is prevent this from attacking, which means I need to freeze it once before Foxy attacks, and then Foxy will kill it. I want to prevent this from attacking twice. I do also just have 8 damage in hand that I could use on this. I could redraw into the Berry Blade and kill this next turn. If I just do 4 and then redraw into 5. That will presumably end the fight, but I don't want to bank on that. I have no way to stop this Mega Mimic from going off, at least not forever, unless I Snowstick the Bigfoot. I could Snowstick Bigfoot, then redraw next turn and Snowstick the Frost Guardian. I think that might be our, our cleanest play, just adding a little bit of stun to everything and waiting for Foxy to finish the attacks. So we're going to go with that one. Now Grizzle will attack, but that's okay. I'll let that get tanked on Colonel. Redraw here. Freeze the Frost Guardian to let Foxy hit it. I did forget that the Mega Mimic was going to attack, but we had enough health on Colonel to survive, so... <laughs> that worked out, but I'm not going to pretend that that wasn't just luck. Alright. Ow Snow has become evil. Interesting. Hey, we won the run! Alright. Feeling pretty good on the first run here. Um, I'm not sure what that end cinematic means, but we now get to go to town and do some nice little roguelite updating. New Frost Guardian. Oh! Oh, that's very cool. Okay, so I think what that means is that when we play the next run, I have to face the deck I just built. Okay, well, we'll keep that in mind because of how good Foxy is. Foxy also just got plus 10 health, which makes him much harder to take out. All right, well, that adds an element of long-term planning to this game, which is very cool. Anyways, that was our run. I think we will rebuild a town when we go in for the next run, but I hope you all enjoyed this first look at Wild Frost. I had a ton of fun playing this game. It does look like the Steam reviewers who were saying it was impossible to win your very first run were mistaken, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment, drop a like, all that stuff, and cheers. GG.